Hey, what's up, folks? Rodin45 here today. Uh, listen, I get a lot of questions that, you know, people ask me, hey, so I know you can still carry. Uh, how, how much should I practice? I'd say every other week. Uh, try to get out there. You got, you know, four weeks to clean a month. Try to get out there at least once to twice a, uh, once to twice a month. However, with ammo shortages or the perceived ammo shortage being the way that it is these days, it's a little bit difficult for uh, the average consumer to go out and acquire the amount of ammunition that they might need to run some of these more advanced drills or go take a training class. You know, I mean, if you, if you were to go take a training course, which I, I highly recommend that you go, you invest in that because uh, it'll only help you out further in the end. But, uh, you know, it, it, it runs a pretty penny. I mean, you're looking at anywhere from four to $600 for a class, you know, basic handgun uh, class to defensive handgun two three four whatever they have out there uh, it's like you know two to two to two to six hundred dollars for the course and then uh about 1500 rounds per course and that gets a little pricey not everybody has a reloading set up in their basement or kitchen or what have you you know uh so someone you know decided hey let's start making applications to help individuals uh get the practice that they need uh, specifically dry fire practice is what this video is going to be uh centering around so we have technology at our hands that we didn't uh have uh you know even 10 12 years ago and forgive me i'm coming off of a cold here guys so uh, if i sound a little raspy or acting a little weird it's probably the cold medicine uh but we have we have uh we have technology and available to us that we didn't have 10 to 12 years ago and one of those items is our cell phone and this i found to be a great training tool believe it or not uh, another item that we have is laptops portable computers ipads uh, touch pads whatever pad you want to call it uh, video technology and video capability is made it possible for the layman the civilian, the uh, armed citizen, sheepdog, whatever you have you, law enforcement, military, uh, to be able to do video training. And video training is really important. Uh, it's one of those things that I actually like to go to. And, you know, I, what I like to do personally is I'll take just my phone and set up shoot, no shoot situations uh, in the environment. You can even use your own house. I don't suggest tactically sweeping and clearing your house uh, if there's an intruder in the night. I think there's better ways, you know, find a safe location, telephone, flashlight, firearm, those drills. Uh, that's probably the better solution than actually, you know, uh, sweeping your house for the intruder. But it is your environment, and it's an environment that you're constantly operating around. It's one where I think everyone kind of drops their guard in. Uh, you know, most people get home, they'll put their weapon away, uh, they'll lock it up. You know, it's, some people even put their firearm in one safe and their magazine in another and then hide their ammunition in another place. And I think it was Bill Burr who actually did this funny ass ske sketch, uh, sketch, I'm sorry, where he's talking about, you know, he wanted to buy his wife a shotgun. He's running all over trying to assemble his fucking gun, uh, trying to defeat this dude. And, you know, that's bullshit. Uh, I think if you're going to carry, you should carry frequently, consistently, and uh, pretty much wherever you're at. It, wherever you're allowed to legally, that is. Uh, so, you know, that's that's one part of that mindset, having that mindset of preparedness. The second part of having that mindset of preparedness is actually being mentally prepared for, uh, for what it is that you're actually carrying, what the consequences are f uh, for the tools that you carry. Now, if you do carry, like I said, get out there once or twice a month uh, and actually put rounds down range. And I'm not talking about just standing in a cubicle and working your marksmanship where you just, you know, from the desk, present, pull, and then see where your, where your rounds go and try to aim for that little X. I'm talking about high center mass, T-zone, uh, you know, you're working a pelvic girdle, working, working the target. Uh, being dynamic in your shooting, uh, getting down, shooting supine, uh, supine, prone from the side, you know, running to a, to a point, shooting around barriers, shooting through barriers. I think that's one thing that people uh, uh, don't necessarily do a lot of in their uh, practice, especially defensive carry practice, is shooting through barriers. And when I say shooting through barriers, I'm not talking about taking your 115 grain ball ammo and just throwing it through a door to a silhouette target. I'm talking about taking your defensive carry ammo 
first off, whatever you choose to use, and I'd hope you choose to use something that's like a modern bonded hollow point, and this is PDX1. Federal's HST works out really good. Uh, in, in, in seeing what that what that round's actually capable of, you know, trying a variety of different uh, uh, mediums, metal, glass, plexiglass, uh, wood, you know, foam, board, whatever it might be, just put shit in front of you and uh, practice shooting through that, uh, seeing what happens to your round once it gets through that, and if it even makes it to your target, what your deflection is like at different uh, at different angles. Uh, yeah, so it's about being dynamic in your training. However, going back to the ammo shortage, it's one, costly, two, uh, time-consuming, and three, when you add those two up, you get just a general uh, uh, pain in the ass that I think a lot of people, unfortunately, even those responsible citizens, sheepdogs, whatever the hell you want to call them, have a hard time getting over that hurdle. Uh, but fortunately, technology that we didn't have 10 to 12 years ago is at our hands. Now, what I'd like to do is first talk to you about what you can get on your iPhone or Droid or whatever you might have, and also what you can do with uh, a video. Actually, let's talk about the video first since I'm on the subject. All you need is a laptop, iPad, touchpad, whatever it is, uh, some form of, some way to capture video via the iPad, touchpad, cell phone. Uh, you can have a, a, a video camera, I don't have one because I'm using it right now to film. Uh, upload that and project it, get a projector. And you can literally set up shoot, no shoot uh, situations. They can be dynamic. You could be outside at your car. You could be uh, at the grocery store. You could be at the bank, at the ATM. You could be in your fucking couch. The possibilities are endless. Wherever you could bring your fucking video camera, somebody could bring a gun. And if somebody could bring a gun there, you might want to learn to train in that environment. Uh, and this is a great way to get access to that environment. Uh, to kind of negotiate around that environment via video, via video training. And what does that mean? It means you're just working basic operating conditioning, three-turn contingency, stimulus, response is pulling out and deciding shoot, no shoot, and then, uh, st uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, stimulus, and that would be the feedback back. Now, here's the three things you're really missing from, uh, from dry fire practice or even when you present out and... Uh, and you're working with a video screen shoot no shoot situation. One is recoil. All right. So here's my carry weapon. It is empty. Uh, for example, if I'm videotaping and I'm sitting there, you know, maybe I'm at the bank or what have you, or at the teller. I turn around, some dude's fucking sitting there trying to talk shit to me, what have you. Uh, now my now my uh, autonomic reflexes are kicking in. I'm beginning to perspire. I'm beginning to, you know, respirate. Tunnel vision begins to set in. I start freaking out uh, internally. I need to do my own exercises in my mind to make sure that I can respond effectively and efficiently. And the best way to do that is to condition a certain response. So I'm here. I see the, t the, the screen. I'm working the situation out. You know, maybe two days ago, I went there and videotaped this whole thing. It only takes 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and I present from the holster. Out. I decide it's shoot situation. Slow trigger, press to the rear. Back on target. Maybe they don't go down. Shoot, 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 shoot. Threat no longer presents itself. Search and assess. And then back. Everything about that is real. Except for, I'm not getting the boom. That's the one thing that's missing. The bang from the fucking bullet leaving the barrel. Uh, the second is the reciprocation of the of the slide. So I'm not really getting that tactile sense. And uh, the third thing that's really missing from the dry fire practice is the actual uh, feedback from the round being sent downrange. So those are the three things that are really missing from your from dry fire practice. Again, it's just uh, sorry, your slide moving back and forth, the reciprocity in that, the bang, the audio, the acoustic shock from the round leaving. Not everybody's walking around with fucking ear earbuds in their ear. Uh, and two, seeing the penetration of the target. A lot of people are visual. People in general are visual. I'm sorry. Uh, it's our primary sense and we really utilize that and it's really tough actually when you're out shooting you know just to focus on that front sight and keep your focus on that front sight and not be distracted by what's out there 
So the video training, it's really great. You can really set up some dynamic situations uh, from a sitting standpoint. You know, you could do it pretty covertly as well. People don't really need to know what's going on. Uh, you know, if anybody asks, you just film a movie and you set these situations up and, you know, you make a few of them, give it a couple days, edit the video, what have you, uh, sleep on it and then run the drills and you'll be surprised. Uh, you know, obviously there'll be some stimulus there that starts triggering some memory and you begin to think, all right, this is going to be a shoot, no shoot, or this is a shoot situation. This is a no shoot situation. Uh, Sure, maybe, but it's still that 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 stimulus response stimulus that we're that we're kind of looking for. Uh, it's at least the closest that we can get. And what's really beneficial about it is it's a carry weapon. All right, this isn't like we're going and playing fucking duck hunt on on Nintendo. This is the the item that we're actually carrying. It's the weight, the feel. Uh, these are real life situations that we find ourselves in, uh, particularly. More often than not, via the bank, you know, everyone goes to the bank, uh, restaurants, not the bar, because you shouldn't be caring if you're going to the bar, and if you are caring when you go to the bar, don't be fucking drinking. All right, uh, so let's take a look at some of the applications that are available on your telephone, and how we can use some of those applications that are available on the telephone. Let's see here. All we'll do is we'll take the old handy dandy spider go. Get out of that light. Turn the telephone on. Alright, so what we're going to do first is hit the App Store. Oops, no, that's the weather. Hit the App Store. Alright. And you're going to type in on the search bar handgun. And if you type in handgun, you'll get a variety of apps. This is a good app, uh, Pistol Instructor Marksman. It's free. This is the light version, but there's also a full version, and we're going to take a look at that app uh, shortly. And if you just scroll through, you can see that there's just a ton of applications. Some cost money, some are free. If you're not sure, don't buy it. See if there's a light version, and uh, go from there. Now, this is a great app, and this app actually has the added benefit of coming with dry fire targets that you can print out all right the instructions are on the target take the target uh, I'm sorry place 42 inches away to get three meter target okay so I stand 42 meters away and that represents a silhouette target threat at, pos at uh, approximately three meters away place it five meters away I'm sorry uh, stand at five meters this represents a five meter target it goes 7, 10, 21, you know, all the way out to 50 meters, essentially. If you're beyond 100 meters, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I have a hard time believing that you actually needed to press that trigger. Uh, unless it was like a spree shooting. Uh, but, you know, if that's the case, boogie the fuck out. Or try to close to engage. So let's take a look at this app a little closer. Alright, so I try to have all my shooting apps in one location. What we're going to start with first are some shot timers that you can get. These are all free. These really work on your speed. Uh, what I like to do is just put it in, put my iPhone in the outer box here, close to my belt. Put the uh, earphones in, run it at the 5 o'clock position through my shirt, up into my ears, and then I'll put my earbuds in. And as you can see, this even has delayed start. Right, and then, no, it's not sensitive enough for that, so that's that. All right, uh, so leave there, and we'll go into, this is a really good, these these two here and this one are shot timers. Uh, this one I really like, though, the regular shot timer one with the little red arrow. So this is ICE. This is a, a application that was put out by Rob Pincus. Uh, ICE stands for uh, Integrity, Consistency, Efficiency. It is uh, 
a part of it is it is actually combat focused shooting if you guys google combat focused shooting you'll get uh, the ICE training corporation so what you have here is you can you can do you know number of iterations uh, commands whatever you want him to tell you to do how many times you want him to tell you to do it uh, interval lengths voice uh, sound vibration on phone so you can get that feedback and if you wanted to if you go down here you can see drill and you just hit start drill there's a pause gets you ready left all right and it tells you to shoot oh. left shoot straight right all right and if you stop drill there you go all right uh, he also has a little bit of news what have you about and so on so that's a great application here's another Stand by. here's another great application uh, pistol instructor marksmanship program uh, pretty simple to use so what you do is you hit new type in whatever you want and let's say you're just running a practice right so you shoot so this would happen post shooting so I would say alright this is what I shot and you bring the target in and you just start placing the shots where your shots went okay so let's say they're there alright here at the bottom gives you your uh, uh, average distance from the center group size etc and this little hat here oh what's that pick your hand I'm a lefty boom uh, look below to see what advice coach has to in store for you then select one of the more uh, one for more details so here's why I'm probably shooting uh, slightly low and off to the left let's see uh, as a lefty too much finger they give me an explanation right so we go back we'll redo this one and let's say now I have uh, they're all right there go here left-handed again bunch of oh squeeze in the middle finger why see and it'll give you a rundown of what the issue is and then how to solve the issue all right and then a little video so this is great if you're at the range uh, and you're trying to diagnose and problem solve your uh, your shooting. All right, that's a pretty good shot, and I'd be pretty happy with that. So let's go back to practice. Let's do uh, new, and here they have some qualifiers. This is actually developed by uh, a sergeant and a Marine Corps instructor, so this is you know qualifications. So let's take a look at what one of those quals. Actually, let's go to this one here. Uh, see now you get this little. Uh, now you get the little silhouette. Shooters, cover down your assigned targets. Right. Bum. Shooters, this is the combat pistol program training block five, course of fire. At this time, fill one magazine with nine rounds and secure it in your magazine pouch. Fill a second magazine with fourteen rounds and secure it under your belt. Shooters, at this time, advance to the seven yard line. With that magazine of 14 rounds, make a condition one weapon and holster. This is your seven yard line control pair. So that's basically a rundown of that. And uh, like that guy will give you a whole rundown of bullshit that you need to do. Uh, you know, then you, or you can just skip ahead and, you know, just enter where you shot. And oh, you know what? I didn't show you when I was doing that because I got lost in his talking. Uh, again, here at the bottom, it'll give you your shots, your scores. Uh, and then again, that instructor will be there to help you to examine where you are. Uh, in case you need it. All right. So that's, uh, that's actually a pretty good one. Now, the one that we're actually going to go to the dry fire practice uh, area and check out in live is this one here. So we'll come over here and we'll go that little blue one this is what's that called can we focus dry practice dpd application this is the one where you can get the targets printed out uh let's do that maybe later i agree they got some liability waivers because they're not joking around with this 
let's see. So here at the bottom, you hit free targets. Uh, download and print hit download and print and you get to go there Oops. All right, so let's review drills They start you off with some rules you agree uh, Handgun drills live ammo they're telling you uh, make sure that all your line ammo is gone and then you got a succession of dry fire drills to choose from. First relay, fall in on the three. All right. So when he says fall in on the three, you're going to be looking for your three meter target. Lo and behold, there it is. And then you're going to run whatever drill this dude tells you to do. All right. If you choose to do it. Sometimes it's really nice for people to have somebody giving them commands. Uh, not everybody has that shit built up in their head so that they can be fluent in being able to execute those drills without the guidance of an instructor. So why don't we take it over to the dry practice area and I will show you what this is all about, how it looks, and how I like to run the drills. Alright folks, so this is the uh, dry fire area. Now, as you can see, we have a little bin here. Alright, now this little bin is what I use to put my ammo in. All right, now it's important before we do any sort of dry fire practice that we have a location to put our ammunition in and then we remove that ammunition from the from the uh, from the room. Literally get it the fuck away from you. <clears throat> the location of your dry fire practice should be facing a safe direction. I know who's in my house right now. I know the location of everyone out in the house right now. That's my dog, two cats, me and uh child who is safely sleeping not in that direction so if I were to shoot accidentally because I was the dumbass who didn't uh, empty his firing system it would go through the door through the closet through two more walls if it made it that far into the living room through the living room out into a hundred yard field uh, where, no where nothing's there but a river so we're good to go but nonetheless what you would do is you would take your Ammunition. Sorry, it's a little messy in here right now, too, guys. This is uh, this is the uh, rabbit's room. You're gonna take your firearm, magazine. All right. The round in the chamber. Reholster. Remove it from the room. Come back. Double check your fire. Handgun is clear. Alright? Absolutely empty. <clears throat> Always, just like when uh, doing dry fire, you know, you're gonna want to make sure that you're using good trigger control. That's what we're working on. And you're always gonna be facing it to the target. Alright? Now <clears throat> What I have here is two lines. I already pre-measured this room out. So from this target, here we have place at five feet away to get five meter target. So this target is representing the five meter mark. Okay? So this line here represents five feet. So if I were to stand here and orient myself to the target, I am doing exactly what this target is telling me to do. And this would represent a full size silhouette at approximately five feet away. Now what are we working on with dry fire? Let me try to get over here. If I'm working with dry fire, what I'm trying to do is work on seeing my front sight, right? You can only shoot as fast as you see your front sight. So I'm going to come up. It's a little difficult here with the, through the camera, right? And press. Okay? Pretty much that's it. But there's no feedback. You're not going to get the reciprocation of the slide. You're not going to get the audio. You're not going to see the round go down range. Okay? What you are going to see, though, is there, there's any deviation in your uh, front sight. Okay? Now, another thing I like to do is uh, this is pretty much my everyday carry setup. Okay? This is how I carry. Uh, this is how I'm comfortable carrying. This is how I like to carry. And I like to get myself. Uh, as realistic as possible if I'm doing dry fire 
So when I present, I present from my appendix area and I present to the target in that fashion. Why? Because I want to see how my gear works, right? I don't want to be sitting there and just like haphazardly pulling out, shooting, and being like whatever, blah, 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 blah. That's not going to work for you. So I try to be as real with the target as possible. You have the two lines. Safe direction is the location of the target. Let's take a look at how one of these drills work. All right, folks, so uh, real quick, I switched up the fire on. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be running the MMP45. What I was using was the MMP40. This is my typical carry gun. Uh, however, it is winter time, and I do like to carry this uh, this piece. So what I'm choosing to practice with today is going to be uh, the MMP45. Now, if you want, you can carry. Put a magazine in. But remember, striker fire firing systems, right? You get that one trigger pull, and then you're gonna have to reset. Okay? Uh, so you just can't be going bang, 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 bang the whole time. Now it's important for uh, you know during dry practice if you present to work on a few things. One, your reset. Two malfunctions and three oops magazine changes, okay? With your gear. And I hate this holster, it's just the one that uh my Kydex holster actually broke, so this is what I'm running right now. Typically what I would do is since I have my dickies on, but they don't have a change pocket, I usually run my mags in my change pocket. So it's right there, easily accessible. And if I wanted to duplicate that, which I think I will, uh just tuck that away, and that's sort of what I'm running right there. Okay? <clears throat> all right, so first you're going to make sure everything is all clear, and I already double, triple, triple, safe check this fire system. Okay? Uh, so let's work on, you know, whatever. Oh, you could run the app and have the dude talking, but for this video's purposes, I'm not really going to uh, bother with that. You're going to get yourself up to the line. Prior to all this, say, dry practice is starting, okay? Put it out there in the universe. It's good for you to hear. Uh, when it ends, dry practice is over. You can reload your fire, uh, your firearm. So <clears throat> for this one, I'm just going to work on my draw stroke. Uh, and there's a variety of different ways to draw. Um, you can, you know, from the surrender position, come in grabbing the shirt up high, lifting, Presenting the firearm out. Coming back. Alright, so that's one one drill you can do. Alright. See that again? Right, something like that. Obviously you're gonna really want to work that. Uh, another one is just coming up that that air claw. Rip that up, coming up, presenting the firearm, bring it back in. All right. Now, if you wanted to do a succession of shots, if you have your magazine in, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get hold open because you're using an empty magazine, right? So you're going to have to depress that slide, represent the firearm, and then bring it back into action. <clears throat> Those are all fine and dandy, uh, unless I'm doing a mag change. So unless I'm coming up, sorry, the noise you're hearing is our giant bunny rabbit. Unless you're working on a mag change, uh, there's really no need to run the magazine in there. That way you can work your malfunctions between shots. And again, it's just getting that conditioned response. Uh, I pull the trigger, it's spongy, tap rack, bring it back into action, okay? Uh, now, unless you got a double feed, which is kind of more of a nightmare, uh, you tap, rack, you know, nothing, strip the mag, new mag, represent. But if I was going to do a mag change, something like that, right? Come 
like that again. Back on target. Right. Work it again. For this one, it's just going to be a double shot, a double tap, I mean. I'm going to go uh, one to the uh, cardiopulmonary cavity and then one to the brain box. Oh, nothing, right? Tap, rack, bring it back. Okay. Let's try that again. Sorry about that guys, the uh, camera battery died and uh, you'll have that. So that's kind of uh, the dry fire setup, that's kind of what to expect when running dry fire. As you can see there was a fumble with the magazine there, uh, I learned that with my number two magazine, oh by the way it's good to, it's good to number your magazines, uh, this one I don't number because I, I know exactly which one it is, it's one that I modified here in the lovely state of. Massachusetts uh, you're only allowed 10 rounds so this was a full-size magazine that I chopped down because they give you that little plastic block and then I took some uh, Loctite epoxy putty molded it sanded it painted it gripped it and uh, it gives me that compact size it's actually the same size as a Glock 19 now with the extended barrel and the uh, base pack addition there so uh, <clears throat> I finished up my drill now a couple things that I didn't get to go over since the battery died there was one once you're done say dry practice dry fire practice is over and if dry fire practice is over then you can go ahead and uh, reload your magazine reload your firearm put it back inside the holster put it back on your person. Make sure you take your target down. Uh, you want it just plain Jane, regular old room. Uh, the only thing that stays there in my room is the lines that I had measured out. I'm sorry this video was so long, but uh, you know, there's, and there's just so much more that you can, where you can take this, I think is, uh, is incredible. It just takes kind of a little bit of gumption. You know, you, you have to have some moxie there. You have to be motivated uh, and you have to be a responsible and respectable uh, carrier if you decide to carry your firearm. So there's there's uh, there's the applications on your iPhone, which we already reviewed, right? You also have technology in iPads, laptops, uh, the camera phone. Upload those into a computer, do your editing, plug it into a projector, watch it on a big screen, try to get life-size targets, try to get it in a realistic situation, Take your firearm that you carry, strip it clean, make sure there's no ammo in it, excuse me, and then present to these no shoot, shoot situations that you've created. Again, it's about conditioning yourself to the response of a threat. Uh, when you go through your app store, and this is kind of a side, uh, there's a lot of applications in here that, you know, personally I don't necessarily agree with. Uh, I don't think, you know, conditioning children to violence is uh, helpful to the cause at all. As a matter of fact, I don't think, I think it's detrimental. And I think, you know, for most of us, admittedly, I have a, an app on here uh, that shows my surroundings and a gun presents it through my camera. Uh, and, you know, that I, I, I downloaded and I thought it was pretty comical. But uh, in general, you know, I don't think perpetuating violence is necessarily a good thing. I'm kind of a peaceful motherfucker at heart. Uh, but at the same time, you know, people are squirrely. And you need to be prepared for that. Uh, so take your training seriously. Train often. Like I said, go to the ranch, shoot live ammo. Uh, 
you know, once or twice a month. You could do a lot with 50 rounds, seriously. You could do a lot with 50 rounds. You can load up three in each mag, put a dummy round in there between one and two, and uh, get a spongy, spongy, uh, spongy trigger, tap rack, bring it back, uh, you know, fucking tactical reloads, uh, all on 50 rounds, you know, so you can spend a good time at the range doing 50 rounds, you know, if you did uh, from the holster, present the threat, fire, uh, search and assess, bring it back 50 times, you know, that's 50 repetitions uh, in there, everything you do with your uh, firearm, you know, that you choose to carry, I think should represent exactly what you should do, or what you would do with it in uh, a moment of truth. So, you know, if I'm going to load it, I load it like I'm actually uh, uh, going to fire it. And this is fucking loaded, all right? Uh, to me, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, you're a fucking empty, empty gun, blah, blah, blah. No, basic principles apply. I know it's in that direction. Fingers off the trigger. And this fucker ain't going to go bang unless the thing between my ears says, pull the trigger, make it go bang. Uh, so, you know make sure that your training is real as possible and get the extra reps in you know uh what do they call it uh fucking uh admin reloads you know so when you when you go to reload your weapon you know do everything you would do as if you're actually presenting the firearm get those extra repetitions in their muscle memory uh you know your auto autonomic nervous system isn't something that you can just willingly control and it kind of has a tendency to take over if you don't learn to train over it uh, and one of the best ways to train over it is to get that repetition in and that muscle memory in as you can see from that video uh you know that wasn't played out that wasn't sketched uh, that was just real time fucking shit and you know like i said i learned one magazine isn't necessarily dropping free and i had to work that inertia bump uh the uh, the fumble with the reload, you know, I usually run my, I have a tiny little Kydex, uh, pocket thing, or holster that fits inside my change pocket, and it kind of just holds my magazine in my change pocket, but I'm running my Dickies, and I had that little Uncle Mike's magazine holster, and my finger kind of slipped on the way up, I'm assuming that's what happened, uh, so I had to kind of, like, fuck with it to get it back in there, and, you know, that, that, that could, that could really happen, so it's a matter of, you know, working, working your mind, work, problem solving your way through it. Uh, problem solving is one of the things that led me to the idea of, hey, you know, it, you don't need to be a police officer, you know, you don't need to be in the military, you don't need to be uh, fucking super uber duper rich to go out and train all the time when you have this technology available to you. I can't stress to you enough the, no, the shoot, no shoot situations that is about as dynamic as it can get it's working what's in between the ears uh, that's where real life comes into play you might have and i encourage you to set this up a perfectly good shoot situation maybe it's a individual going for their firearm and they're going for the draw and it's clear it's presented and that firearm's coming to you uh, but set up the situation so there's things that you need to be cognizant of Maybe there's kids in the background. Uh, maybe there's a bunch of people in the background, not just kids. You know, maybe it's just a, maybe it's a wall, but do you know what's behind that wall? Uh, these are things that you're going to have to take into consideration if you're going to truly carry your firearm in the public. Is you know being aware of what's your what's your target and what's beyond. And when you know your your body starts to kick in, it's 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 reflexes. That tunnel vision begins to set in. You're gonna get uh, what's called sensory gating. Um, you're gonna your body's gonna start to shut down the senses it really doesn't need except for sight. So uh, you know what you're feeling, what you're hearing, what you're smelling. A lot of that stuff is gonna diminish greatly as you begin to increase to uh, physically, physiologically respond to your stress, fear, and anxiety. So those are things to take into consideration and things to truly incorporate into your videos if you're gonna do if you're gonna run those videos. Wherever you can bring a video camera, you can bring a gun. And that's something to be wary of. So make sure you set yourself up for success. Always set yourself up for success. Train, train to succeed. You know, train to your failure point, and then problem solve your way beyond it. 
And for that, I'm out, guys. So I hope that video was uh, helpful. And I hope, you know, if, if you didn't get anything out of it, then maybe it was something entertaining. Uh, some insight into the mind of me, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I hope you got something out of it. Because I'm telling you, that shit works. Peace. Good night.